Hello everyone, Jay Warden here, and welcome to my recap and review of the episode Too Short a Season, where the main cast are relegated to supporting the guest star. Don't forget those spoilers, otherwise, enjoy. The Enterprise is picking up a geriatric admiral by the name of Mark Jameson as they've received a transmission from Governor Karnas to the planet Mordan 4. He's asking for help as terrorists have taken the Federation Ambassador and his staff hostage and are refusing to negotiate with anyone except the Federation. Karnas feels that Jameson is just a geriatric for the job, so demands he come immediately to Mordan all the hostages will all be killed. Picard is confused though why this is happening as the 40 years civil war has been over for years now and Jameson explains that 45 years ago he helped Karnas with another hostage situation and obviously feels that only Jameson can do it again. So Jameson beams aboard in his space wheelchair and some obvious old man makeup along with his wife Anne and tells Picard that he's going to be in personal command of the away mission and trusts Picard is in full agreement. Picard clearly doesn't agree but he's outranked here so simply obeys. On the bridge, Karnas calls again, repeats his earlier statement for Jameson and that only a Federation mediator can solve it so Jameson accepts the challenge, though Troy is clearly picking up something odd from him. Everyone discusses the situation and Picard gets a briefing from Troy on her senses before Dr Beverly calls in to say that she's ready for Jameson to come to sickbay for a standard checkup when he's ready. Jameson doesn't seem particularly enthused by this and once again we get meaningful looks from Troy as if she's sensing something odd. In their quarters, Anne is unpacking their clothes and marvelling at how awesome the Enterprise is when Jameson doubles over in pain, but he reassures her that everything's fine and his last doctor told him to expect it as part of some changes, though he doesn't specify what. Meanwhile Dr Beverly is giving Picard a briefing on the medical information that Jameson provided, but it seems he lied by giving her reports they were over two months old instead of two days old and thinks he's trying to hide something, impressing Picard on her impersonation of Troy. As a result, he wants Dr Beverly on the bridge for the next few days so she can keep a close eye on Jameson to ensure he remains in good health for the negotiations. On the bridge, Picard invites Jameson to take the con, which he gladly accepts before shocking everyone by getting out of his space wheelchair and walking over to sit at the helm. Picard is impressed and Jameson explains that he's been getting some new therapy lately and it seems to be working. Dr Beverly though is completely unconvinced and explains to Picard in private that it really shouldn't have happened because there is no known cure or therapy to the disease the Admiral has which keeps him in his wheelchair, so Picard tells her to look into the matter thoroughly. In his quarters, Jameson is looking over the messages from Karnas and decides to get up and give his wife a good old kiss. She's surprised and delighted at his newfound mobility but realises he looks a little bit different so brings him over to the mirror. She's shocked to discover he looks almost 20 years younger than before and starts demanding to know what's going on when he doubles over in pain again. In sickbay, Dr Beverly and Picard examine the results of her scans and it seems Jameson has been ingesting something which is radically affecting his body. She gives us a bunch of medical babble that as well as starting to look younger, there's now no trace of the incurable disease that he was previously carrying. So Picard heads off to see Jameson and ask him some questions but both he and Anne are shocked to see he's lost even more of the old man makeup and is now walking about confidently. As there's now nothing left to hide, he proceeds to explain that he basically knew of a planet that has a fancy de-aging drug. Usually the natives rarely give it out to aliens, but because he had previously negotiated a treaty, the natives felt obligated to honour his request to go through the process. He got enough for two doses for both him and Anne, but felt he should test it on himself first to make sure it was safe. Though you're supposed to take this drug over a two year period, the hostage situation made him take both doses all at once, so he could be in peak condition, but refuses to tell Picard specifically why he had to do it for this particular situation, so Picard leaves. Anne is of course rather upset about this whole business and though Jameson tries to placate her, she's not interested and runs off. In the dimly lit conference room, Jameson puts in a secure call to Karnas and once connected tries to get Karnas to give him some specific information about what's going on, but Karnas is cagey and eventually Jameson reads between the lines to realise that Karnas is the one who's actually holding the hostages, referencing how he never forgave Jameson for something that happened during his last visit 45 years ago. Karnas insists that he must come personally to negotiate for their release or he'll kill them all before cutting off the call. So he goes to the bridge, tells Picard to step on it and informs him of what Karnas is up to, but again refuses to give any specifics. He also decides that there will be no negotiations and that they'll have to rescue the hostages by force and that he'll be personally leading the rescue mission himself. He gets data to show everyone some schematics of the capital city and explains a series of tunnels underneath will help lead them to where he believes Karnas is holding the hostages, because that's what Karnas did 45 years ago. Picard has his doubts though and wonders if they shouldn't call up Starfleet Command about this, but Jameson pulls rank and tells him Starfleet gave him full command of the mission as he sees fit. In sickbay, Anne laments of what Jameson has done and how it's likely ruined their marriage now he has his life to live all over again, but Dr Beverly sadly informs her that he's not stabilising from the drugs and he's almost certainly going to die soon. Picard meanwhile joins Jameson in the conference room and he seems he's now completely removed all his old man makeup and is looking his natural youthful self. 
The card demands to know what's really going on here, so Jameson explains that 45 years ago, Karnas took some hostages from a passing starship and demanded Starfleet give him some weapons so he could defeat his rivals. Though officially the records show he was successful in negotiating their release, what the records don't say was Jameson actually gave Karnas the weapons he wanted, but also gave the same weapons to his rivals, thinking if both sides had the same weapons then the balance of power would remain the same and he would still be within the rules of the Prime Directive. But instead what resulted was 40 years of civil war. Picard is appalled by the admission and we realise Karnas just wants revenge for the resulting devastation. Jameson feels this mission presents a chance to redeem himself for his previous actions, hence wanting to personally lead the charge to rescue the hostages. In the transporter room, Picard thinks Jameson should stay on the ship but refuses, so Picard instead decides to join the rescue party without so much as a peep of protest from Riker. And so almost the entire senior staff beam down to an incredibly dangerous mission. On the surface, despite data saying otherwise, Jameson is sure they're in the right location, so they begin searching for the hostages. They seemingly hit a dead end but cut their way through with their phasers and are suddenly ambushed by some of Karnas' soldiers where a firefight ensues. As the crew take cover, Jameson doubles over in pain again and realising they're pinned down, Picard orders an emergency beam out back to the ship. Karnas is furious over the incursion and demands Picard beam down Jameson immediately, regardless of how sick he might be or he'll start killing the hostages. In sickbay, Jameson insists Picard let him go down as they really have no other choice now, so Picard reluctantly agrees and they beam down to Karnas' office. Karnas of course doesn't recognise the now baby-faced Admiral and doesn't believe that it's truly Jameson, merely becoming angrier. Jameson is getting frailer by the minute though and Dr Beverly thinks they should bring down the wife for his last moments. Picard luckily brought along a bunch of pictures showing Jameson's gradual de-aging from an old man on the tiniest of tiny screens. As Anne finally arrives, Picard berates Karnas for holding his grudge and tells him he has to take some of the blame for using the weapons Jameson provided all those years ago when he could have tried to negotiate. Karnas though is still refusing to believe all of this, so Jameson manages to pull himself together for one last go of it and finally manages to convince him of the truth by showing a scar left behind from their original deal. Now fully convinced, Karnas grabs a rifle and prepares to kill Jameson, but then thinks it'll be much more satisfying to simply watch him die horribly from his drug overdose. Jameson and Anne share a final moment before he finally dies and Karnas, satisfied that he's now dead, tells Picard he'll immediately release the hostages. With the hostages released and Jameson buried on the planet, Picard and Riker share a moment about youth, age and wisdom before jauntily heading off to their next mission. Well, off the back of the previously excellent episode, this one is sadly not anywhere near as good, and though it's not a terrible episode, it's an average one at best. The core idea behind it is I think actually a really good one. A bitter old admiral trying to go back and fix the mistake he made 45 years ago by giving weapons to not just the faction demanding them in exchange for hostages, but to the other side as well in order to maintain the balance of power but instead just ends up causing decades of civil war, with the end result being unimaginable destruction and death as a direct consequence of his actions. Sadly, the episode doesn't really focus on this too much, instead simply being the backdrop for getting Jameson to the planet while spending far too long on the whole de-aging nonsense, and then trying to convince Karnas he is who he says he is. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The episode focuses pretty much exclusively on Jameson at the expense of the rest of the crew for the most part, so Clayton Rona has to carry us through the whole thing. I have mixed feelings on it though, and I'm not sure if it's down to the writing, his acting, or maybe both. I can forgive the old age 80s makeup not being very convincing, but his old man voice was even less convincing. I think the biggest problem is that we're supposed to really care about Jameson's plight as he struggles and agonises over his past mistakes, and then root for his attempt to redeem himself. But instead he comes off as largely arrogant, selfish, and just generally unlikable, being a dick to both Picard and his wife through much of the episode. His best scenes are where he admits to Picard what he really did all those years ago, and his last moments with Anne, but other than that I just found him to be a douchebag. I think Rona tries his best to put in a good effort with his material, but the payoff is mostly a letdown. His wife Anne, played by Marsha Hunt, is serviceable but forgettable, and there really isn't any chemistry between her and Rona, though as I said their final moment together was a decent one. The other guest star here is Michael Bataki, who plays Karnas, and you may remember him from the TOS episode The Trouble with Tribbles, as the Klingon who starts a fight with Scotty by insulting the Enterprise. 
I liked Karnas much better because I just felt he was a much better actor, I understood his motivations and he's also got a really nice gravelly voice, though towards the end he ruins that somewhat by doing some terrible overacting as he gets angrier and angrier. But I get why he was so angry and vengeful towards Jameson, blaming him for the devastation of his world. It's also good when Picard calls him out on it because as much as Jameson is responsible by giving them all the weapons, Karnas shares in the blame as well for being the one who used those weapons instead of trying to negotiate a peace settlement. Ultimately though, as I mentioned earlier, the episode wastes far too much time focusing on the de-aging of Jameson and the final confrontation trying to convince Karnas. Like, after spending five minutes trying to convince him, Jameson finally shows him a scar which was made from their initial pact all those years ago. A blood oath, essentially. Why didn't he just show him this to begin with? It would have saved us all a great deal of time and could have been spent much better on exploring the real consequences of both characters' actions 45 years ago that led them to this point. Overall, this could have worked better if they just tossed out the whole de-aging malarkey entirely and actually brought us a genuinely old admiral rather than a young guy dressed up as one, certainly one with better acting chops perhaps, and just have him do one final mission. The episode could have then spent far more time exploring the backstory and ideas surrounding it which would have been far more interesting to watch. Also, the rescue attempt on the hostages feels tacked on with a phaser fight to try and spice things up. I mean, we barely spend four minutes from beaming down to beaming back up and then absolutely nothing of consequence is accomplished. Again, I think this could have worked better if they tried the rescue attempt, failed, got captured and then brought before Karnas so their final confrontation could play out. Sadly, we're simply left with the old Season 1 TNG trope of good ideas but poor implementations of them. I've read rumours that this may have initially been pitched as a sequel to the TOS episode A Private Little War, and instead of Jameson, it was Kirk who was pulled out of retirement to deal with the consequences of his actions in that episode, where he essentially did the same thing as Jameson by arming both sides of a conflict with the same weapons to keep the balance of power, though in that case it was more of an attempt to mitigate the damage by the Klingons as they were doing the arming of one side, so Kirk felt he should arm the other side to keep the balance. The core idea is the same though, interpreting the Prime Directive in a specific way by arguing that arming both sides with the same weapons will maintain the balance of power instead of giving one side a massive advantage, and then dealing and living with the consequences of what those factions end up doing with the weapons. Though I really like these ideas, I'm just as glad they didn't do it though, because then we would have been made to see Kirk in shitty old age makeup instead, possibly even dying, and it would have just been a poor way to end such a legendary character. Not that Generations did it any better, mind you. As for the crew, there really is little to say here and they're just more or less dragged along with little input. There's no B-plot at all to distract us and Jameson just pulls rank on Picard, meaning he has little choice in the matter, so about their only contribution is to help us find out what's going on and provide commentary about it. I was annoyed though with Riker after having made a big point several times in the show now of how he just doesn't let the captain go on dangerous away missions, doesn't even react to Picard joining the rescue mission, even though there's a very clear and present danger. Not only that, but almost the entire senior staff is on this mission, no security guards at all. I'm almost surprised they didn't bring Wesley along too. I mean, they shoehorn him into everything else after all. Otherwise, this entire episode is basically just a character story of Jameson vs Karnas with the TNG crew along for the ride. So while there are some good elements here and there, overall this is at best a mediocre episode, but I still think it's worth a watch. Next time, an advanced race kidnaps Wesley and the other children from the ship in the episode When the Bow Breaks. Please feel free to leave any comments or feedback, and if you liked this episode then please do like, subscribe and share. This has been Jay Warden, signing off.